Hmm, Chablis left our champagne here. Sticking your finger into the champagne bucket reveals that ice does not last forever. Like you always say, a little warm champagne never hurt anyone. Besides, I earned this. This hall contains only one guest room, an ice machine, and a private elevator. A large glass wall at the far end has a security door that effectively blocks your admission to the Costa Club rooms down the hallway. This private elevator leads up to the resort's penthouse suite and is not designed to be used by mere plebeians like you. Knock all you want, it's doubtful anyone will answer. Pouring the old melted ice into the little receptacle on the ice machine, you prepare to catch a few new cubes. The dumb waiter on the far wall is used to deliver meals to the hotel's penthouse apartment. These buttons control the dumb waiter beside them. You press the green button on the dumb waiter's control panel and see the doors slide open. Now, how are you going to fit inside that tiny chamber? It doesn't do anything now, of course. The dumbwaiter doors are already open. But if they were closed, you could just reach out here and press... Hey, wait a minute. If the doors were closed, you wouldn't be able to reach out here. You'd be trapped inside. What an open, uncluttered, minimalist decor. You wonder what the rent is on a place like this. Think of the thousands of vegetables that gave their all on this table. It's a kotatsu, one of those low Japanese-style dinner tables. Two shoji screens are placed with great care so as to perfectly complement the other Japanese decor and to manipulate the ambient light in a paraphrastic bit of cogistry. This door bears a tiny brass plaque with the delicate La Costellata logo and the words, Private. You try the knob and find it locked. 
It's a kotatsu. A simple arrangement of three tropical flowers adorns the far wall like a sculpture. An ultra-modern halogen chandelier casts a perfect circle of light on the table. The penthouse's living room is sparsely yet tastefully decorated in an oriental minimalist style. One item here attracts your attention, and she's sitting out on the balcony. Three perfect roses rest in individual vases in a perfect example of beauty and simplicity. This must be one fascinating and confident woman to decorate so tastefully and yet sparingly. A saltwater aquarium is built into the far wall. A very few extremely expensive fish swim lazily back and forth. How unusual! A natural gas fireplace burning with an intense blue flame at a tropical resort. The doors flung open while the air conditioner runs at full force. Obviously this woman has no financial problems either. The nice thought, Larry. But think of the smell. You've always loved women in transparent clothing. How you wish she'd tire of keeping her arms crossed. The gentle trade winds blow Shamara's hair in bold cascades, leaping playfully back and forth, occasionally covering her shoulders, then exposing their creamy glory. Shamara is the most beautiful woman you've ever seen. Oh, have I died and gone to heaven? Who are you? And which department of the spa do you represent? I don't recognize your strange uniform. Are you with the kitchen help? When did they start dressing retro? And why? Are you sure you're supposed to be here? Oh, I don't... Uh, wait, wait uh, actually, that's right. I, I do work for the spa. <laughs> Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Larry. Larry Laffer. <laughs> How do you do, Mr. Laffer? I'm Shamara Payne. Please state your business here. Um, uh, well, um, I, I, I believe there was some, um, uh, report downstairs, uh, about the dumbwaiter. Yep, <laughs> your dumbwaiter was written up. <laughs> Have you had trouble with your dumbwaiter? Dumbwaiter? No, not really. At least no more than usual. Oh. Are you just going to stand there doing nothing, Mr. Larry Laffer? Do you always sit here, Shamra, just staring out at the ocean? Yes. Once I led a frenetic life, double-clutching espressos at 6 a.m. power breakfasts, concording my way across the pond, why I once even owned an Apple Newton. Wow. But one day, I finally looked at myself in my apartment's mirrored ballroom and realized I may be fabulously wealthy. I may be at the top of my chosen profession. I may hang out with the Cognoscenti. Damn, I should have packed a thesaurus. But am I happy? Well, yes, I was. Quite. But more importantly, does my life have meaning? Why am I alive? What difference would it make if I just checked out? So, in what I felt was an extremely Goganish move, I left my penthouse in the care of my servants and moved to this rather deserted island to live a Spartan life of contemplation and thought, living off room service and New Age music until I can fathom my meaningless life. Rich. Good. Thoughtful. Bad. Let me see if I understand this, Shamara. You're successful, wealthy, and happy, so you gave up everything to sit and think. Yes, Larry. I have everything. 
And yet, I have nothing. Uh, I don't know. You've got a great pair of tits. And what has your contemplation taught you, Shamra? Oh, nothing really. But lately I've been wondering about the lack of men in my life. What a coincidence. I'm horny too. I often think that myself. About men? Oh, your sexual orientation or deviation is unimportant to me. What I seek is the perfect man. Oh, that leaves me out. Not physically perfect, you understand, but rather spiritually perfect. Someone sensitive, intelligent, creative, wise. Hmm, oh, I'm out of here. It sounds to me like you're just another self-made, wealthy, healthy, new age, 90s, fast-paced dropout looking for meaning in an otherwise meaningless existence. Why, yes, Larry. That's exactly it. You were paying attention. But can you help me? Can anyone lead me out of this funk? All right, this ultimate babe will be mine. If only I can find something around this dump to please her. You stick the match in the fireplace, being careful to keep it just above the water. Good idea! Your burning lamp bears a remarkable resemblance to the universal symbol of learning. The gentle trade winds blow Shamara's hair in bold cascades, leaping playfully back and forth, occasionally covering her shoulders, then exposing their creamy glory. Her arms are like velvet, only a lot warmer. I want you to have this flower. An orchid. How beautiful. How high school promise. But you wouldn't just give me an orchid, would you? That would be too simple. Well, I... No, this is not merely an orchid. Let me think. It is natural and beautiful and unique and... Wait! I see. You're using this orchid to symbolize the perfection and purity of nature. How natural things are best. How the world can create millions of these flowers, no two alike, just like human beings. And thus, with a simple flower, you are encouraging me to recognize my own individuality, my own uniqueness, my oneness with nature, my own connection to the everlasting life force. Hell, I just thought it was kind of pretty. I knew you'd understand. For you, Shamara. An old lamp, huh? And burning with such an unusual fragrance, too. Why on earth would a man show up on my balcony, bring me out of my reverie, make me rethink my chastity, just to give me a sandy old lamp? Unless... Unless... Unless that old lamp is a symbol, a representation of... of... of the lamp of knowledge! Surely this is no ordinary beach find, but rather a symbol of the importance of lifelong learning, of the pursuit of knowledge, of the need to continue to grow as a person throughout my life. Oh, Larry, I will continue to grow. I do want to keep learning new things. I just wonder where I'll be able to find another teacher as wise as you. 
Gee, I was just hoping we could burn it by the tub tonight and you could play Susan Sarandon. You don't need another teacher, Shamara. I'll be glad to teach you everything I know. Shamra, I brought you this sterling silver bracelet. I hope you like it. Oh, Larry, I have no need for bracelets. Once I had hundreds of bracelets, nearly all of them better than this. Oh, I just thought perhaps. But wait, that's not what you're trying to say, is it? This isn't a simple gift, is it? I bet it's much more. The superficial old me would have seen this bracelet as merely a clumsy attempt at a cheap gift. Probably an ulterior motive, suspicious as always of a man offering me silver, in expectation of future rewards. But you, you're different. You're as transparent as my pants, teaching me to achieve a higher level of consciousness, a deeper understanding. You're helping me scale these mental walls I've built around myself these last few months. I... No, Larry, please, allow me to bring my thoughts to fruition. I understand now. It's obvious. You're not trying to buy me off with this cheap silver bracelet, are you? You're speaking in symbols, aren't you? You're challenging me to overcome my shallowness. And I will, rest assured. But a silver bracelet? What can this mean? Oh, I'm so foolish. Such a lightweight. Of course I see it now. Your gift symbolizes the spirit of life itself. A ring with no beginning, no end. A solid circle chasing itself round and round a vast emptiness. Much like my quest for spiritual fulfillment, which it looks like it must be far, far away, but which, when you finally open your eyes to discover it, has actually been right at your feet the entire time. Oh, Larry, your wisdom is so powerful. I believe I'm finally beginning to understand. I just thought you'd look good wearing nothing but a bracelet. Yep. That's exactly what I thought you'd say. <laughs> You're really catching on to me, Sham. Shamara, I think you should have this pearl. Oh, Larry, I have no need for more jewelry. Besides, while this might be a large pearl, it does have a slight flaw over here. But wait, you're not just giving me yet another bauble. Your thinking is far too sophisticated for that. It is? You're right. It is. I see now what you're implying. It's true, I know. I, I've spent my life basing my opinion of objects upon their financial value instead of on their inherent beauty. Missing the beauty of the tree by acknowledging only the net profit to be gained by harvesting the forest. Missing the glory of a solitary canyon while recognizing only its landfill potential. Missing the solitude of a seashore while buying up the oil drilling rights. So exactly what is it you're trying to get me to see in this simple pearl, Larry? Uh, well... Oh, of course you won't tell me. That would be too simple. I know you want me to discover the meaning here by myself. Yes, of course. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> I've got it. The iridescent shimmer of a simple sphere created naturally by one of Earth's simplest creatures from the irritation of a single grain of sand layered with bodily secretions over a lifetime creating an object of classic beauty. You're telling me to accept the imperfections in my character that have been troubling me these past few months. To accept the irritations that life has handed me. To stop trying to remove all irritants from my life. 
to cover my irritations with layers of love so they become points of strength and beauty instead. I am? Uh, I am. Oh, Larry. I've never had a man talk with me this way. Treat me this way. Express things in such wonderful, subtle ways. Me neither. That's just the kind of guy I am, I guess. Shamra, I hope you like this diamond. It was a gift from a friend of mine. Another diamond? Thanks, Larry, but I have dozens of... Oh, wait. It's a symbol, isn't it? Let's see. What could a diamond represent in your superior way of thinking? Hmm. This is a tough one. Diamonds are a girl's... No, it can't be about friendship. Could it be a way to cut through my cynicism and jadedness? I've got it! You're trying to tell me that even someone like me, who has been under great pressure for so many years, can use that pressure to transform myself from a dark mental lump of coal into a transcendent human of crystalline purity and beauty. Why, uh, yes, I think that. And you're saying I don't have to give up my tough exterior in order to achieve perfection. How wonderful, Larry! How insightful you are! How wise! How lucky. Why, thank you, Shamra. I'm glad you caught my little message. <laughs> I think you need to give yourself more credit than you do. I have this, uh, object. Ah, so I see. It's beautiful. It is? It is. I'd like you to have it. Why, thank you, Larry. It's not only beautiful, but I bet it's important and probably meaningful, too. But exactly what is its meaning? Aha! Of course! To me, it symbolizes the important role that art plays in all our lives. And not just art, but the arts in general. Music, painting, dance, performance, sculpture, drama. All have the ability to move us spiritually above the fetid plane of our daily dreary existence and take us to a realm apart. A place where, if we're fortunate, another tiny fraction of the ultimate truth may be revealed, where we cease for a few fleeting moments to be these self-consumed blobs of protoplasm and share in the endless quest for true enlightenment. Gosh, I thought she could get a couple of bucks for it as scrap metal. You're right, Shamra. I'm glad you like it. Shamra, there's something I simply must tell you. May I whisper in your ear? Of course, Larry. But what is it? It's just a little something I learned recently. Oh, my God! But of course! Why didn't I ever realize that before? You're right. It makes everything so clear. I've been a fool. Oh, Larry, you are a sensitive, thoughtful, caring, sharing New Age man. Good thing it wasn't something dirty, I guess. Uh, yeah, I just thought you'd want to know. Would you like to join me in a glass of lukewarm champagne? Not really. I prefer my champagne served in a wine bucket, surrounded by cracked ice, bracingly cold, chilled to perfection. Well, I have the bucket, but, um, I'm afraid my ice melted some. Time ago.
pouring the old melted ice into the little receptacle on the ice machine, you prepare to catch a few new cubes. Sure, you could open the champagne here, but wouldn't you rather wait until you could share it with someone? Shamra, I've given you all my <laughs> hard-earned knowledge. Now, will you share this champagne with me? Oh, yes, Larry. I would love to. I just hope that I can somehow find a way to express my appreciation for all you've done for me. Your wisdom has clarified so many things for me, enabling me to reach higher planes of understanding than I've even dreamed of before. You've shown me the purpose of life. You've given meaning to my otherwise meaningless existence. How can I ever repay you? Well, there is just one little itty-bitty thing that we haven't covered yet. Besides your breasts, that is. Sex. Uh, I mean, Shamra. Uh, don't you think it's time we, uh, Explore the inner workings of your inherent womanhood? Sex? Oh, Larry, I'm sorry to say that for me, sex is hopeless. You see, I've been celibate my entire life. During school, I was always too busy overachieving to waste time dating. Once I started work, I was under such pressure to succeed that I never allowed myself the distraction of men. If you think my understanding of life is weak, I regret to say I have no knowledge whatsoever of the sexual part of my existence. Are you trying to say... Yes, it's sad, but true. You're a virgin? <laughs> I'm sorry, Larry. I hope I haven't disappointed you. Ah, Sham. Don't worry about it. Remember, I'm here to help you in every way. Oh, could you, Larry? Is there any way you could do for me physically what you've done for me spiritually? God knows I'll be glad to try. But are you willing to keep working as hard as you have been? Oh, I will, Larry. I promise. Then, uh, let's go inside, uh, sit by the fire, and begin drinking a little of this champagne. Oh, thank you, Larry. I promise to give it my all. And here's to you, Larry Laffer.
So, um, I guess I'll be going now. <laughs> Gotta get ready for tonight, right? Have a nice day. 